What is up, Flavor Family? It is Bobby and Art at Whole Foods to do a gluten-free review. Now has never been a better time to be gluten-free because the products are next level. The advances in the last few years have been next level, and whether you're celiac or you're gluten intolerant or gluten insensitive, there's products for everyone here, but just because it's gluten-free does not mean it's good for you, right? I wanna show you products to buy because they're the most nutritious. Either whole grains or made from beans, not the ones that are made from cheap starch and cheap filler. So let's go down there and do a epic gluten-free review. Before we do that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click that subscribe button, my friends, and better yet, there's a bell icon right below the video. Push, enable all notifications, because every single week we got three videos going live two videos on the weekend and a live stream cooko live stream cooking during the week which is a lot of fun we're making a recipe from start to finish hanging out with the family and having a good old time now let's see the best of the best gluten free here at whole foods all right family let's start with something really exciting gluten free bread everyone wants to know about the best gluten free bread and the thing is i want to find gluten free bread that uses whole grain gluten free grains, right? Because it's very common that breads and gluten-free products use cheap filler, right? Starchy stuff that isn't whole grain, like rice flour, potato starch, tapioca starch. That stuff is not only cheap and you're paying high prices for it, it's also not nutritious, right? It's a simple carbohydrate that spikes your blood sugar and doesn't satiate your hunger, which is why this is probably the most nutritious gluten-free bread out there. It's Food for Life gluten-free sprouted bread. You might recognize the brand Food for Life. It's the same guys who make Ezekiel. And if you watch my bread review video, this is my top rated best in class Bobby approved bread because sprouted grains are where it's at. Sprouted grains are easier for your tummy to digest and sprouted grains, um, your body drives a ton more nutrition from them. So the Sprouted for Life uh, gluten-free flax or the original three seed is fantastic. The only problem is it's expensive. It's $9.49. Ingredients though are great. Sprouted quinoa, sprouted millet. It does have tapioca, which is fine. Sprouted flax, very, very clean. My only problem is it's not the best tasting. It doesn't have the best texture, right? And I feel like we live in an age now where we don't have to suffer with that anymore. Gluten-free has gone to the next level now here in 2019. So we can do better, but I just wanna let you know, this is the best nutrition sprouted gluten-free bread on the planet that I know about. So what is the best gluten-free bread? It's right next to it. And by far, this is the best. It is, by the way, I'm keeping the doors open so the Waldos can't see me. I'm being fogged in here. I'm almost like a superhero. I love it. Waldo, <laughs> see that? <laughs> as soon as I say that, the Waldo comes walking at me. Uh, this is the best in class bread. It is Canyon Bakehouse gluten-free bread. First of all, flavor, top notch texture just like bread. You will fool anyone. There's no compromising here. The flavor and texture is just like real bread. I've been making a lot of sandwiches and uh, grilled cheeses for Desi using this. She's on a higher starch diet right now. It's part of her She's on a higher starch postpartum diet, now that the wall is gone, for um, rose. It's better for breast milk production. If you're on, if you're doing postpartum, I would not be on keto. It's not good for milk production. Anyway, this is fantastic for flavor and texture. What about the ingredients? Best in class, brown rice flour, a little bit of tapioca flour, that's okay. Whole grain sorghum, uh, whole grain millet, extra virgin olive oil, whole grain amaranth, only two grams of sugar. You guys, this is amazing. I've never seen a bread use extra virgin olive oil. It is $6.39. The thing is, I saw it at Walmart last week and I could have swore I was reading the ingredients and they didn't use extra virgin olive oil. They used canola oil over there. So I have to investigate, is it possible they're making a cheaper version for Walmart? That sounds like a Flav, Flav City exclusive, but this is best in class bread. I would scoop it all day long. What about bagels, right? They do have the, oh here, they do have the Canyon Bakehouse bagels too, but bagels are a different texture, right? They will have to be softer and chewier. So they do go a little bit away from the whole grains and they do opt for more stuff like tapioca flour. That's the number one ingredient after water, which is fine, it's a bagel, but it's expensive. And I actually found one that's better. In my bag of contraband here, I brought in Trader Joe's, right? Trader Joe's has a lot of gluten-free products and their bagels are the best flavor and texture I've ever found. The ingredients, not quite as clean as uh, Canyon Bakehouse, but they are using expeller pressed canola oil. So it's not highly processed and highly refined. And it's not GMO because uh, Trader Joe's doesn't use GMOs. The rest of the ingredients are pretty good. Four grams of sugar, 
Sodium's a little high, but this is my best in class bagel and it's way cheaper than these bagels here. So scoop them for sure. What is the best tasting, most nutritious mac and cheese? This is a case of don't take the front of the box by its you know, word, read the ingredients. Ancient Harvest is a well-known brand and it says it's quinoa super grain mac and cheese. So I would expect the first ingredient to be quinoa, right? I turn it around, it's organic corn flour followed by quinoa. Very misleading, right? Corn is the cheap filler, super starchy, simple carbohydrate that spikes the old blood sugar. They're doing that before the quinoa. I don't like that. And then there's other ingredients I just don't like here, you guys. And this is in the cheese sauce mix. There's organic maltodextrin from corn, very high on the glycemic index, another spiker of the old blood sugar, and they have natural flavors. So that's out. Annie's, it says rice shell pasta here. And lo and behold, it's white rice followed by brown rice. So the cheaper white rice first. I just don't like that. That really bothers me, you guys. But the cheese, uh, the cheese mix, the dry cheese is actually very good. We can do better though. There's a brand here called Banza made with chickpea pasta. Now, I do have an issue with this brand because chickpea pasta should be basically one ingredient, right? It should be chickpea flour and water. But in all their pastas, they always put tapioca and they put xanthan gum. I'm okay with the pea protein, jacks up the protein level, but they're using two emulsifiers to kind of congeal the pasta. I don't think you need that. And if you have a sensitive tummy or GI issues, you want to avoid emulsifiers wherever you can. You can't avoid them in nut-based milks and plant-based milks. You can't avoid them in pasta. So I don't like the fact they're using uh, tapioca and xanthan gum. So I would put that down. And I would say, once again, from Trader Joe's in my grab bag here, this is the best mac and you could add your own cheese to it. It's brown rice and quinoa pasta with two, count them, two ingredients, brown rice flour and quinoa flour. This is what you want to see. There's no filler, all thriller. Add a cheese sauce to this, you're good to go, no problem. Yeah. Oh, you need some help? What are we doing here? Putting some crackers back? I want the green ones. Ah, the green ones. Let's see what those are. Country Ranch, ooh. Really and she actually grabbed something I'm gonna talk about that's not Bobby approved. But before we go there, Annie's. Annie's is very, very popular. They have good Annie's and bad Annie's. The crackers here, in my opinion, fall under bad Annie's because what do we say about cheap filler and starchy uh, grains? That's all this is, right? The uh, cheddar bunny tails is rice flour, corn starch, tapioca starch, potato starch. All filler, no thriller. This is what you wanna stay away from, okay? Now, the nice old lady was reaching for Blue Diamond Almonds Nut Thins, and every one of the Nut Thins, unfortunately, has uh, natural flavors. Watch my video after we're done about natural flavors. It's another word for artificial flavors. There's nothing natural about it. So I would not buy that. Really popular brand based in Chicago is Simple Mills. And the ingredients are best in class for gluten-free. We're talking about nut and seed flour, almond flours for the other, other ones, organic spices. My only issue with this brand, they use organic sunflower oil. Well, Bobby, I thought organic is good. Organic is good, right? Because it's non-GMO. But unless it says expeller pressed sunflower oil, it means it's highly processed and highly refined at very high temperatures, which, alter, which alters the uh, fatty acid into almost like a hydrogenated fat. So I've looked on their website, I've done research, I can't find anywhere that it says expeller pressed. And trust me, if they use expeller pressed, they put it on here. So that's a super bummer because the rest of the ingredients, top quality. Which leads us to the Bobby approved Mary's Gone Crackers. Mary's doing it right, you guys. Not only is every cracker I see gluten-free, but many of them, or this one in particular, doesn't even use oil. It's all whole grain brown rice, whole grain quinoa, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, brown sesame seeds, whole grain city, crispy. Mary has gone crackers because she must be spending a fortune on these uh, crackers. I mean, they cost a lot. It's $5.69 for five ounces. So we're talking about over $16 per pound. This is where you want to live, except for Mary's real thin crackers. If you read the ingredients, which we have to do, she uses palm fruit shortening. That's palm oil that's been hydrogenated. You don't ever want to use palm oil because I don't care if it's responsibly farmed or not. It's bad for you. Most of it's bad for the environment. And I always say this, ask yourself a question. Walk over to the oils aisle. If you walk over there, duh, can you buy palm oil to cook with in the uh, grocery store? No. So why are they using it? Cheap, right? all filler you do not want to eat that kind of stuff that has palm oil all right that is it for the crackers let's move on gluten-free pizza pizza this is very exciting and it's pretty new and it's best in class it's capello's pizza 
They started with pizza crust, now they have full pizzas. It's a little pricey at $9.99, but you guys have never seen uh, ingredients like this in my life. It starts with cage-free eggs, almond flour, arrowroot flour, coconut milk, coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, psyllium husk, cider vinegar and honey. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. That's the cr uh, crust. The toppings, super clean, uncured pepperoni, fantastic. Now, if you don't want to splurge, right, there's a couple more options. We go to the more well-known names. We have Daya, which is pretty OG, and Kali Power. Now, don't think that Kali Power, uh, Kali Flower, I was <laughs> screw this up, Kali Power, because there's another brand named Kali Flower, is uh, low carb, because it ain't, right? Even though it's a Kali Flower base, the ingredients have brown rice flour and cornstarch and tapioca, so it's not low carb. But the rest of the ingredients are pretty good. They use sunflower oil that's not expelled or pressed. Not ideal, but it's pizza. And they use extra virgin olive oil. So this is a good choice. Daya is another good choice because the crust is actually pretty good. Brown rice, sorghum, potato starch, and olive oil. It does use expeller pressed oil, which is nice, but they also put vegan natural flavors in here. Uh, at least they say they're vegan, which means that they're not from animal sources because a lot of times natural flavors are from animal sources and they put those in vegan products because they don't know that they have to differentiate. But I'd say either one of these is still okay. Best in class is, man, that Capello's is the bomb. Oats are really interesting because even though they're gluten-free, they have to be marked gluten-free because they're oftentimes produced in a facility that has flour and other things that, if you're celiac, could do a problem on your stomach. So. On the second part that makes it really interesting, you always want to buy organic oats because oats are heavily sprayed with uh, Roundup. And the active ingredient in Roundup is glyphosate. And that is very high in non-organic conventional oats. So always buy organic oats. Uh, if you're going to do the kind of convenient ones like this, Bob's Red Mill is one of the few that's actually organic. But make sure the flavored ones don't have natural flavors because a lot of them do. Um, this is a new brand and it's super cool. It's purely Elizabeth. And she's putting collagen in there. You guys know how I feel about collagen. I take it twice a day. It's a great supplement. The only problem is they're using conventional oats, and I don't understand why they're doing that. So that's out. But Elizabeth also makes grain-free cauliflower hot cereal with almond protein powder, coconut flakes, cauliflower, freeze-dried strawberries. The sugar is only eight. That is super cool. So if you want to go into granola now, I'm going to stay in the same uh, product here. Purely Elizabeth. Purely Elizabeth is fantastic. The sugar isn't too high. The ingredients are phenoms. But I also find that a lot of times if you're gluten-free, sometimes oat can upset your stomach. Oats are very inflammatory. And I notice even when I eat oatmeal, it upsets my stomach. So I would go to the grain-free options of granola. And once again, Purely Elizabeth makes this grain-free granola that has killer ingredients. And this one has collagen in here. Oh no, this one has MCT. MCT oils with organic pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, almonds. This is fantastic, Waldo. Waldo. All right, Waldo gone. So Purely Elizabeth, a fantastic grain-free or even uh, grain option for granola. And then this is new. I haven't seen this. It's called Eco-Friendly Foods Initiative Chickpea Granola with Probiotics. You guys, the sugars are only four grams per serving. Every ingredient is organic. Fantastic. And the last ingredient is probiotics. That is a total added boost. It is a little pricey, but that is a fantastic deal. Just when you're buying granola, Keep in uh, mind the sugars. They're often very high. These were actually pretty good. Now, taking one step down here for cereals. This is really easy. I have a full cereal review. Check that out as soon as we're done. We go over every healthy and bad cereal out there. And best in class gluten-free for me is Barbara's Puffins. And this is cool because she kind of makes kid-friendly cereals, the peanut butter ones. And it's not too high in sugar at nine grams. And it is using real peanut butter, right? There's no natural flavors. When you start getting into cereal, they're going to start using more corn flour and stuff, and that's fine. But this is great. All right, and then reaching down here is a really unique gluten-free option called Love Grown, and it's made with beans. Look at the ingredients, you guys. Navy beans, lentils, and garbanzo beans, brown rice flour, sugar, not too bad at 7 to 9 grams per serving. Um, I would go with the cinnamon O's because there's no natural flavors and it's super clean. The uh, chocolate one here, the Comet Krispies has natural flavors, but they do have other varieties, but a really cool option using beans that is gluten-free. Pasta. When I'm looking for gluten-free pasta, I want to see whole grains or made of legumes and really nothing else. So 
I pick up that bonza pasta again. And someone asked me on Instagram, because there's a huge thing of it at Costco, and like I said, it has the tapioca and it has the xanthan gum, which I don't really like because those emulsifi emulsifiers are not really necessary. But, you know, if you don't mind it, a great thickener. But you don't need it in pasta. No, no. Yeah, see, I got you there. <laughs> it is a great thickener, though. You're right. It's very good. Uh, I would stick with something like uh, red lentil pasta. There's one ingredient, organic red lentil. Same thing with pow. I love the branding and I love the name here. It's not only red lentil flour, it also has organic quinoa. I can get behind that duo of you know, dynamic whole grains here. And then I just can't get behind this ancient harvest. They're saying on the front here, it's corn and quinoa, but the corn comes first. So it's that starchy filler first. So try to find something that's one ingredient or if it's two whole grains that are fine too. Um, and then in my cart here, and this is the best price ever at Trader Joe's. This is my favorite spaghetti gluten-free pasta ever. It's the organic yellow lentil and brown rice pasta. The texture and flavor is just like real pasta and it's just those ingredients. And this red lentil pasta is just one ingredient, organic red lentils, and it's way cheaper than this. Art, when you see navy bean pasta, what do you think in your head? Sloppy Joe, sloppy, sloppy oh. Joe. Hoagies and grinders, hoagies and grinders. Navy beans, navy beans. <laughs> sandwich. And we're out. <laughs> Super exciting gluten-free pancake options, and I'm so happy they finally have this. It's the brand new Birchbender's Keto Pancake Mix, which is also gluten-free. And what I love about it is the ingredients are best in class, you guys. They're starting off with almond flour, tiger nut flour, which is a high-fat, low-carb nut, and then they have coconut flour, a little bit of cassava starch. The cool thing about this is that it only has five net carbs per serving of two pancakes. So really, really cool. Now it's also gluten-free, but the paleo mix is not my favorite because it's still a little pricey, not quite as pricey as the keto, but they put cassava starch first and then almond flour way down. And cassava starch is a cheap South American root vegetable that I call like filler, right? Cassava starch, also known as uh, tapioca starch. It's cheap and they're putting that as a primary ingredient and charging a premium price because it's paleo. So it is gluten-free, but I would say just go for the keto one because the almond flour is way more nutritious. Simple Mills, even though I don't like the crackers, I love the pancake mix because it's literally six ingredients, almond flour, almond flour, arrowroot starch, organic coconut sugar instead of refined sugar. Everything else is super clean. And then I wouldn't get something like King Arthur flour because you get a lot more filler in here, you guys. And they're using a lot more starch, potato starch, tapioca starch, rice flour, cane sugar, natural flavors. So that's a no. But man, at least here at Whole Foods, and I know it's a little premium, there's some really cool gluten-free and keto pancake options for brekkie. That is it. Art and I just rocked the gluten-free haul like a boss. And keep in mind, once again, just because it's gluten-free does not mean it's good for you. You gotta read the ingredients, you gotta look for whole grains or beans, no filler, all thriller. And you don't have to go to Whole Foods, right? You can find this kind of stuff everywhere. Not all of it, you just have to know how to shop. So let us know where to next. Leave a comment down below. And you guys, these videos are very hard to make. Subscribe, like, share, all those good things. We got two more of those hauls going below us right now. But Art and I will see you very soon. And we leave you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, and peace.